one small story from the book Humilitas, which I'm going to share with you this morning, a Christmas book review of the book that I'm declaring to be my personal book of the year, my favourite read for 2011. It's a book, in fact, about the history of humility. It's written by John Dixon, a Sydney author who lectures in history at Macquarie University. It's a nice, easy read, but it actually stems from his research into the history of humility. It's called humilitas because that's the Latin root of our word humility, uh, a word that originally means low to the ground. It's also the word, of course, at the root of our word humiliation, which is a far less pleasant thing. In his book, John Dixon gives the example of Caesar Augustus, the guy you might have noticed we just read about in the Christmas story who, who held the census of the whole Roman world. Uh, John Dixon gives the example of the, the glowing eulogy that Caesar Augustus wrote for himself to be displayed in bronze in front of his own tomb. Now, I don't know if it's ever occurred to you to do this, to write your own obituary, to write your own eulogy. I guess it gives you the chance to say all the nice things about yourself that other people should have really noticed all along. Well, Caesar Augustus wrote it. He got it cast in bronze. He ordered that copies be sent to every corner of the empire when he died. And you could call it 35 things I love about me. Now, again, most of us these days would think it was kind of odd to do that. I mean, secretly you might kind of like the idea, but by and large, we prefer humility. Back then, it was perfectly normal. So here's a quote, Caesar Augustus, on the glories of Caesar Augustus. When I was only 19, at my own expense, I raised an army and successfully defended the Republic. He says, I organised eight gladiatorial games at my own expense for everyone to enjoy. He says, my name was mentioned in a famous song. Laws were passed in my honour. I was incredibly generous to thousands of people. I brought peace to the land, all my own work. And on it went, 35 things I love about me. Nicole Kidman on 60 Minutes last Sunday night. Carl says to Nicole, you're such a great actress. And she says straight away, no I'm not. I don't see myself as a great actress at all. Now, apart from the fact that I personally think she was right about that, it, 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 it was a little glimpse. These days, we do prefer to be seen, to be humble. Unlike in the ancient world, these days, humility is valued. So the question is, what changed? What made the world change its mind about humility? The fascinating thing is, according to John Dixon's research, you can trace that reversal to a single point in history that started a trend that changed the world. The birth of humility, not as shame, but as a virtue. Although I've got to say that even these days, although we might love humility, we're still often confused about exactly what it is. Uh, we can still confuse humility with being a doormat. We can still confuse humility with out and out weakness. We can still confuse humility with low self-esteem, which is not actually true humility at all. Uh, one of the great strengths of John Dixon's book is, I think, that he gives a beautiful, crystal clear definition of what humility actually is. Humility, he says, is not about being powerless. Humility is the choice to direct the power you have in the service of others. Humility is not about being weak. It is the noble choice to forego your status, deploy your resources or use your influence for the good of others before yourself. So humility is saying, I've got status, so I'll use it to help someone. Humility is saying, I've got resources so I'll deploy them so someone else benefits. Humility is saying, yes, I've got influence, so I'll use what influence I have for the sake of others and not for me. Humility, in other words, is not so much for the weak, but for the strong who are prepared to serve. 
which is, again, something the ancient world just didn't understand. Power is good, you see, because power brings honour to me. Strength is good because I can boast about it in my self-written eulogy. That's the way the ancient world worked until, according to John Dixon's research, until there was a humility revolution brought about, and you can trace it through history, brought about by the events we're celebrating this morning, the birth and the life and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. The ultimate example of power directed to the service of others. The ultimate example of the noble choice to forego status for the good of others before yourself. As the Lord of the universe who took on humanity in the form of a baby boy demonstrates so clearly. Did you notice in that second reading this morning under the heading Mary's song, Mary gets it right from the start. She's just heard from the angel the incredible news that she's going to give birth to the son of the Most High, whose kingdom will never end. And here's what she says. From now on, she says, the humble will be called blessed. Look at her actual words, reading number two, or on the screen behind me. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. The God of the universe is into humility. And there's about to be a dramatic reversal. From now on, humility is going to be seen to be valued by God and to be right at his very heart. And he's going to demonstrate it. He's going to model it firsthand in an incredible way. The proud will go running. The humble will be lifted up in God's great revaluing. Uh, look down your page just a little bit further. Uh, again, in bold print or on the screen, if you can see the screen. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Can you see the point? God values, God honours, not the proud like Caesar Augustus with his 35-point self-eulogy and his decree of a census of the entire Roman world to measure his personal power. God values the baby boy who's born, we see just a few verses later, in a cow shed and laid in rags, we are told, three times in a feed trough, a manger, a manger. It is outrageous, the most high in a manger. Look at the definition again. Humility is the noble choice to forego your status deploy your resources or use your influence for the good of others before yourself. Which is exactly what Christmas is about and is exactly what Jesus is about. From his birth in a cow shed, from his bed in a manger, right through to his death on a cross. Forgoing the highest status of the universe at the greatest conceivable cost for our good. Which is, of course, whether you realise it or not, why he started a trend. And people started to catch on right around the Roman Empire, right around the world. That humility was, in fact, a beautiful thing. That if it's good enough for the creator of the universe, it may just be worth a try. And that humility actually resonates in the way the universe was always meant to be. Can I say this point that Humilitas is a great book to read if you're in any kind of leadership position in your work? There are sections for people like that. If you're a manager, if you're a teacher, if you're a CEO, but also if you're in any kind of relationship with someone else, if you're a dad, if you're a mum, if you're a husband or a wife, it's a hugely practical book. The subtitle of the book is A Lost Key to Life, Love and leadership. And it really is. A humility that starts with recognising the rule of the servant king and bowing to him just like the shepherds in our Bible reading. See, it is kind of obvious, isn't it, when you think about it? It's saying, don't come to God with your boasting. He doesn't like it. 
Don't come to God with how impressive you are. He prefers humble. Don't bother turning up on your judgment day with your 35-point list of things to like about you. He is not interested. Make sure you turn up humble and forgiven. And then likewise, in the way we treat each other every day, if humility is good enough for Jesus, then it's good enough for us, which if you're anything like me is a lesson you need to keep learning day after day after day. Not making yourself a doormat, but knowing your strengths and using them not for you, but for the good of other people, with the humility that was born at the first Christmas.